All right, party people, greetings and grace to you. It's your girl here, Clarity Speaks, popping into your timeline with another stream of my consciousness and another episode of A Reasonable Black Woman Reacts. And today I am reacting to Fox News sport commentator Marcus Wiley and his clip that's on Instagram calling out Miss Rihanna on her vow some years ago to never work with the NFL or perform on the at the Super Bowl halftime show. And as you see, she has changed her tune. So Marcus Wiley has some thoughts about that. And his thoughts actually triggered some of my thoughts that I've had for some time about celebrities and how they get on my nerves with the particular narrative that they have. So I'm going to get into that after the clip. But before I do that, I want to ask that if you like how I'm showing up in the world here with Clarity Speaks, support your girl, help me do the two step with the algorithms out here. You can see here you can um, support me or I, I would prefer to say support than subscribe. Uh, but yes, you can support me. You can show your support for me by subscribing on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or Rumble. I really would love to get my Rumble numbers up and my YouTube numbers up, again, so that I can dance with the algorithm and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, subscribe to me there if you're feeling me. Also, check me out um, at ClaritySpeaks.com and get on my email list so that I can um, stay in touch with you directly should these uh, platforms want to you know, shut your girl down because I do have very unpopular opinions. Also, I want you to uh, forgive the audio that you're about to hear. It was, again, a random thought that I wanted to catch. I got it. Uh, I recorded it on my cell phone. And that is why you can tell the difference in the audio quality here. But this will not be the quality going forward. But just a heads up. OK, so let's get into that clip. And remember, go ahead and click that like button. All right. Like, 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 like right now. OK. Um, and um, tell me what you think after you hear her an umbrella eh, eh, because it is raining bs right now i love you rihanna but damn it you're gonna have to come realer than this now you are allowed the opportunity like anybody and everybody to change your mind but keep it real rihanna said back in 2018 the reason she didn't want to do the nfl super bowl halftime was and i quote i am very exhausted with celebrities black celebrities and this narrative around quote-unquote representation it sounds very altruistic but if you lift the hood and kick the tires to me it's giving very much um arrogance and ego it's giving very much self-serving right this whole idea of oh um look at me i'm a celebrity and I need to make this movie and I need to be in this ex, you know, exposition so that little black girls and black boys can see that it's possible. Now, on the one hand, there is some level of truth to that, particularly if we were existing seven, eight, nine, ten decades previously during slavery, Jim Crow uh you know reconstruction era and, and so on and so forth here we are in the 21st century right and it is pretty clear that black people globally can be and do whatever they want most black people okay um I'm, I'm speaking generally here and and knowing that there are some places in the world where there's oppression of black people but here's a news flash there are more non-black people being oppressed today than black people you know what I mean? Or equally, okay? Since, since we have this allergy uh, to, um, you know, acknowledging the suffering or the oppression of any other race above our own, I'm going to say there are other races that probably are equally being oppressed. And again, let's go to China. This is a homogeneous nation. There's few black people there. They are oppressing each other. So the idea of oppression, as I always say, has more to do with an oppressor seeking to uh, keep whomever it is that they are oppress, oppressing from becoming formidable competitors because that is what really racism is really about. It's competition. It's, it's about keeping whomever you are feel threatened by from rising up and becoming a formidable competitors. In America, we just happen to have different skin color. But trust and believe, white people have been oppressing other white people. 
you go again, go to South Korea. I'm not South Korea, North Korea. Go to uh, China. Go to uh, you know places in the Middle East. People are oppressing each other, and black people are oppressing each other. Go to Chicago. Go to any city, any urban city, and see. Matter of fact, I'm to give you one better. You don't even have to go that far. Look in your own family, and you see uh, your own black family members oppressing you. Okay, so let's just be real here and, and um, you know, deal in reality and not in this, um, this fairy tale, right? That we love to, this fantasy, uh, this romanticizing of, of, of our slave past and, and the constant licking of our wounds. But to my point of, you know, these celebrities and their self-satisfaction to assert that, Little black boys and little black girls can't know that they can be this, that, or the third unless they see some representation of their skin color in a position. It's, it's insulting my intelligence at this point in the 21st century. And I want to just right now call BS. All right? Okay? It's almost as though you are... And, and here's the thing. You know, as celebrities, they're getting paid astronomical amounts of money. Okay, they want to talk about a living wage, but don't, no one want, wants to ever sit down if they were this altruistic and concerned about the poor. Would they ever sit down and look at their salary and how much, you know, is Beyonce looking at her, her ticket sales and be like, oh, this is just, um, you know, how can, um, you know, those who need a living wage afford my ticket? She's not pricing her tickets or she's not uh, demanding that the promoters who, who, are, who are promoting her concert price their tickets at a livable wage. You know what I mean? So this is where, when I talk about lifting the hood and kicking the tires, where we begin to see the hypocrisy and the self-delusion and the social vanity of these celebrities. And I'm sick of them. Okay? And, and it's, it's like the emperor has no clothes. And thank God for the internet and the digital age and the democratizing of information such that we regular people, who work in a living wage, even if we ain't got a computer or access to the internet, we know how to go to the library and get on the internet. But more than that, those who, who are not making a living wage seem to find the funds to get a cell phone, lest I digress. But anyway, we have this information at the tip of our fingertips now, whereby we can see the emperor has no clothes. We can look this stuff up ourselves. Never in history have there been um, a time where the average common person can gain access to the to the information that, say, doctors, lawyers, celebrities, uh, you know, had and were at one point, you know, having us looking looking at them as like, oh, my God, they're, they're they just have all the knowledge. Oh, my God, they're so smart. Oh, my God, whatever. Now we have this information at our fingertips and we're going like. This, the emperor has no clothes. They're maybe two, three steps ahead of me in the intelligence department. <laughs> you feel me? They, they, or in the knowledge department. All I need to do is buckle down and, and read and, and, you know, uh, learn X, Y, Z. And if I really desire to be a doctor, if I desire to be a lawyer, if I desire to be, well, you have to have certain talent, obviously, to be an entertainer, but, but not, not, not these days. Let's I digress. I'm getting off on, on a tangent here. But my point is that I'm trying to say is that we're able to learn how we're finding out how you're making the sausage. You feel me? We're able to get in there now and learn how you're making the sausage. And we're saying, what? So to that point, as Marcus Wally just pointed out about Rihanna, okay, she was protesting one minute back in 2018 when it was all socially vain and it was all the the you know you ha it was politically correct you, this is what you needed to do as a celebrity because they give you your talking points okay they tell you what you can and cannot before and against okay if they're not telling you directly they're definitely suggesting it and then however the herd goes you go in that in that direction if you want to keep your livelihood and 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 to uh, avoid the the venom of the cancel culture. So here she is. Everybody's on Colin Kaepernick's, uh, you know, um, on the Colin Kaepernick social agenda. Okay, and it's all about representation. I will never do do anything for the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl has is is the is the enemy is the devil. I never would perform there. And now fast forward, Jay Z comes in with his little. Uh, socially vain initiatives and 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 hobnobs with the with the NFL and 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 you know 
gives gives the NFL their 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 uh invitation back to the cookout. And now because Jay Z is affiliated with the NFL and is supposed to be the 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 uh mediator between the NFL and and black people for representation's sake, gets Rihanna to perform and now she changes her tune. Well, Colin Kaepernick came back out there. I thought that was the goal, right? He was the one that was making all the all the all the stink about the 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 police brutality and this and that and the third. And he wanted to get, you know, the goal was that he needs to get back in to be represent for representation's sake. He ain't back. So what are we really doing here? And then she goes and says, oh, it's about representation. Um, I had second thoughts. And now, you know, it's good to see representation on this big stage. Really? In 2021? With all the Negroes in the, in, in the NFL, with all the Negroes as, as sports commentators in the NFL, we, we don't have enough representation. B little black boys and girls can't be inspired by, by Michael uh, Marcus Wiley and, and, and some of the other commentators, black commentators that are on there, all the, all the feminist, masculine, female uh, uh, commentators in the, in the NFL that are black representing. Like, what are we talking about? My point, guys, it is all social vanity. A chasing after the wind, it is fake. And it is these celebrities uh, uh, blowing smoke up our butt, right? Because we're so easily manipulated. We're so easily pacified. It is an absolute joke that we continue to fall for and we continue to give them this, this level of power. Because they are not that smart people smarter people because if they were they wouldn't be so easily manipulated and so easily led astray by propaganda political propaganda these celebrities are nothing but political puppets and that is why they're paid so well so high so there you have my random thoughts there um as you can see i was piped up you heard my country coming out of my <laughs> my country twang uh, coming out when I get piped up and start speaking from my belly. You heard me speaking from my belly a couple of times. This thing be bothering me, be getting on my nerves. Um, but yeah, to conclude, yes, um, we have created a culture, a media culture around celebrity that has given them more power, more influence than they actually deserve, than they are actually competent to uh, have, right? And to operate in that's what we've done and consequently we've taken power away from ourselves they are operating as emperors with no clothes and it is obvious that what they're making the sausage with we have better ingredients okay and it is an insult to the parents of these kids and to just the average thinking human being that little boys and girls black white or whoever but specifically in this context black little boys and girls cannot aspire to be anything because they don't have someone of their skin color that they can look at and pattern themselves after I mean how arrogant is that and let me clarify for the people in the back who are ready to come for me and call me uncle tom and all this sort of stuff how arrogant is that for people in the 21st century to assert as I said early on it would be intellectually dishonest for me to assert that there is absolutely no racism or no discrimination that black people are experiencing in the 21st century in America or any place else and one of the places that we do see current discriminations and disparities is in our legal system but more so in our political system OK, we're actually majoring on the minor and to actually lift the hood and kick the tires of certain um, things that are happening in our uh, legal system as well as but more so, again, that political apparatus here. Um, yeah, to, to lift the hood and kick the tires there would be very costly for a lot of these celebrities whose bag is actually connected to 
certain political apparatuses, right, to 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 continue to carry the water and feed us these very inferiority complex type narratives, narratives that I reject, narratives that I uh, despise and actually the reason for this video. But there is hope here, you see, because I want to talk to you guys about employing something called outmaneuvering and outsmarting or outsmarting and outmaneuvering the relics of racism because that's what the what it is at this point in history it's relics of racism that we're dealing with we're not dealing with the palatable racism that our ancestors actually dealt with and actually overcame they were actually riding around and getting it to be quite honest with you particularly in the reconstruction period of black american history which is my very favorite part and which is basically empowering my opinion here it is the battery in my back and why I cannot accept or tolerate any more of this r racial inferiority narrative that we are feeding the people okay I, I, I just cannot and in order to understand how I have the audacity to say you know I'm, I don't think pursuing reparations is the highest and best use of our time that I'm not a fan of affirmative action and in in many other different programs that we as black Americans have been uh, conditioned and propagandized to believe that are so necessary for us in order to uh, have representation and to be treated fairly in America. Um, yeah, you know, in order to understand why I have that opinion, you should study the Reconstruction period, that very small period of history where our ancestors were, were riding around and getting it. OK, they were riding around and getting it, creating things like Black Wall Street, riding around inventing things like, oh, the stoplight and potato chips and <laughs> and a myriad of other inventions that we are actually enjoy today. They either directly invented them or were participants in these things. They were becoming Congress people during that time. They were riding around and getting it and they were experiencing palatable racism. They had just stepped foot off of the plantation due to emancipation proclamation and they were outsmarting and outmaneuvering and producing things. They were becoming formidable competitors and that is what caused them to be sabotaged from that point on up until the to the uh, Jim Crow period where we actually bought and drank the Kool-Aid and acquiesce. Otherwise, we would have if we had kept that same momentum um, that had us rebuilding the Wall Streets and all of the, all of our communities every time they came to sabotage and burn them down. If we had kept that momentum and kept that focus and not got in bed with political manipulators in the Dixiecrat Party, a.k.a. Democrat, a.k.a. Uh, uh, what is that? Progressives, a.k.a. Uh, Democrat Socialists. They keep changing their names uh, to, to, to throw us off. Uh, <laughs> but let's not let's not digress. And don't come for me about Republicans. I got smoke for them as well. But this is the this is not the topic of this thing. But it is that period in history that puts the battery in my back and that shows me that I don't need affirmative action. I don't need reparations. I mean, these people were actually promised reparations and they calculated, right? Did a cost benefit analysis and said, okay, these people have been oppressing us. They're probably selling us wolf tickets with this reparations, uh, 40 acres and a mule. So what I'm going to do, I'm about to focus on educating myself. I'm about to focus on getting my economics here straight and learn how to lay these bricks here, a.k.a. Uh, shout out to Booker T. Washington and Tuskegee. And then the white man going to need us to, to lay these bricks. And now they're going to have to pay us. So, again, not to say that there were n more hurdles that they needed to climb, but all I'm saying is that they were moving forward. And they were not letting it stop them. And we know their names today because of what they did. And so here we are, uh, probably 100 decades post that and about 60, 70 decades post uh, Jim Crow. And we up here talking about we need celebrities, these perverse lyrics singing uh perverse lifestyle promoting celebrities to influence and inspire our children to be like them I am insulted my intelligence is absolutely insulted and you as a black American's intelligence should be insulted as well and that's really all I'm saying celebrities do not deserve our um uh, that level of, of, of power or influence, they are not worthy of it. 
Um, and we should, if we were courageous, we should shut them down and reduce the demand for their product so that they can really see that they're not that needed because they are really under the influence due to the, the media culture that we've created that has elevated them in our society. They think that we, <laughs> we actually need them. And the only reason that they, they have this, ele- this elevation is because the political and media culture has need for them, particularly the, the political structure has need of them to influence the masses to go in the direction in which it, it wants to go. And unfortunately, we have now about four generations who have drank this Kool-Aid. And, and if you really think that I'm speaking Chinese here and, you know, betraying the black culture and not on black code, what I'm saying right now, you t- only thing you're telling me is that you are a Gen Xer, you're a Gen, you're a millennial, or uh, you're a, a, a Gen Xer, uh, part of my generation, who uh, have have actually ruined this generation. <laughs> These the the, the next the, uh, the Gen Zers and the Gen Millennials who are the Gen Xers kids, we've ruined it. We've ruined them. Thank God for a remnant in every generation, because I'm believing God that there is a remnant of righteous people in every generation. There is. But for the most part, society is declining because of the morals of gen, of, of the baby boomers, that whole free love culture, then raised us as latchkey kids, and then now here we are, gener- Generation X is trying to be buddy-buddy with our kids and, and, and trying to reparent them in a way that our parents didn't parent us, which is, good in some respects but in in other respects it's not we've lost uh, there's moral moral values is hanging on by a thread if that at this point you know so anyway those are my thoughts guys um yeah shout out to Idris Elba who basically has said yo can I just be an actor he's getting shellacked right now by the black delegation out here who again is literally jealous (laughs) over our minority status Okay, Idris is basically saying, yo, I just would like to be black. I mean, I just would like to be an actor. I don't want to be in this box of black, right? And and right now you got the black delegation ready to shellac him and ready to cancel him because he just simply wants to be a human being and 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 um, awarded and recognized for the merit of what he can do. And I, I'm with him on that because it is ridiculous to see how we as black Americans, it's, it's, it's shameful and it's sad because we're smarter than this. And that's, again, that's really what I'm coming, coming from here. I'm not talking to us as though we are less than. I'm looking at us like, like a coach looking at their star playing, like, what are you doing? Why are we constantly eating this inferiority complex soup here when we come from this ancestral pedigree who done showed us how to ride around and get it when they ain't got nothing. Here we are with, with all kinds of access. We need to divorce ourselves from this narrative. And it's to the point we're so sick with this inferiority complex that we become enslaved to that we are literally jealous over our minority status. Let another race dare assert or suggest that they too have been oppressed, that their people too have been oppressed, we ready to pipe up and, and knock them down and say, uh-uh, not, not as oppressed as black Americans. We've been, we, we've been the most oppressed ever. We had the longest tenure oppressed. Nobody's ever been as pre- oppressed as long as we have. No one has ever experienced the, the level of discrimination that we have. We are jealous, okay? They talk about the victim Olympics. That's what they mean. We are out here defending the goal of our minority status in the victim Olympics. It's crazy, and it gets us nowhere. By the way, that's that's the that's the other crazy part. All it gets us is is the tokenism that they love to that we have be- become accustomed to. Uh, you know, calling other people out. Like for instance, me, I would be called a a a a a, a, a token black or a, a coon or or whatever because I'm happen to be a black conservative. So that's what they would call me, right? But the actual fact is. You're the token. 
right? Those who would call me as a black conservative a, a token. No, you're the token, right? Because you, you, all you want, all you get for for um, voting for people who are claiming to give you reparations, voting for people who are claiming to to do this and that for you as a black person, all you get to be told is, hey, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. All you be, all you get is basically to be the political booty call to 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 your political uh, preference. Right? You don't get any sort of tangible at all. But I'm the coon because I understand economics and capitalism and how to outsmart and outmaneuver and make it work for me. Get out of here. Guys, th those are my thoughts. Am I on one or am I on to something? Holla at your girl. Deuces.